best way I describe lighting is if you walked into a room that is closed off and you turn the lights off and then question why you can't see anything, it's because the lighting isn't on. So within the 3D space, what we're doing is we're creating real world lighting and we're basically assembling a scene within 3D and then think of hitting render as hitting the on button. Generally they want, like the client will want like a photo, photorealistic look. In order to achieve that, we're trying to match what a camera does. Not so much about what we see with our, our eyes in the natural world. So in order to mimic what a camera does, we have to also take into consideration camera settings to go with the, with the lighting settings. Creating a 3D environment, when you look at 3D in general and compared to how it differs or how it's similar to photography, uh, the biggest thing with that is when we're doing it in 3D, we have to create the object or objects. So what we do is we first create a model, whether that's an environment, whether that's an object, whether that's you know a chair, a piece of furniture, whatever. We need that object to do things with. In 3D, we have more control than let's say a photography studio has because not only can we match cameras, we can match lightings and so forth, but we can also hide uh, lights so that they actually don't appear in reflections or they don't appear in camera space, but they still affect the scene or affect the environment. We're putting cameras in the scenes, we're adjusting the lensing, we're adding lighting, we're adding backdrops, we're putting environments, we're basically staging that object the same way we would stage a real object in photography. It's actually a very similar process, you know, to achieve a final image or a final result or an animation as you would with a real camera in photography. One thing that's great about 3D is that we can customize the space and we can create stuff that doesn't even exist or is not physically possible but still looks accurate because we're using all kinds of tricks and techniques to fake how things look. Top three things to remember about lighting. I would say for the first point is lighting is very time consuming. If you try to rush that lighting process, that's what tends to make or break an image. So the second thing that I would say a knowledge of traditional photography is, is very important in lighting. And the third thing I would say about the three most important things to remember about lighting is having lighting direction, knowing how you're gonna light something, if it's gonna be a studio setup, if it's gonna be realistic, if it has to have harsh shadows, if it has to have really hot highlights, it's all, all of that plays together in, in how the final look and feel of that object will turn out. Top three things about lighting. One is to have a fill light and key light. So that way you have somewhat of a highlighted surface and then you have a backlighting surface so that you can get the full read of an object. The second thing to understand about lighting is yes the glossy objects versus matte objects. One actually depends on the actual environment and another one actually depends on the actual lighting facing it. And three, I'd say the big thing is to know the mood that you're going for. A, a dramatic environment like outside, like dusk, is going to definitely get a different workflow than a product like a chrome faucet stuck in white space. Again, it all comes down to that sort of relationship of how all the objects fit together, how the lighting fits together as a whole, the material properties, and, and just understanding that the scene as a whole works, works together.